So I'm here on the Canary Island of Tenerife at a place called El Tire. So we are within the National Park at about 2,300 meters above sea level under what could be argued as uh, some of the best skies in Europe. So because of the altitude, uh, the seeing is usually really, really good. And fortunately, there's a bit of a Kalima uh, at the moment, which is sand that's being blown across from the Sahara Desert that uh, kind of ruins the view really, or ruins the imaging. So we're going to give it a run out tonight and see what we can capture. The drive up Mount Tere takes about an hour and it's a really good road with fantastic scenery along the way. There's places along the main road where you can pull in safely and park up. If you want to find a place away from lights to shoot from, you'll have to scout it out during daylight as it's absolutely not safe to walk around on this terrain in the dark. It's going to roughly set up my tripod and I can level it with the newer leveler. This thing saves my life, just makes leveling so much easier. I'm going to try and image for as long as I can tonight. So I brought out a spare battery and cable to connect to the sea star when the battery level starts to drop just so that I can keep running as long as I can. Obviously the sea star comes with its own mount, uh, pretty good mount, don't have any problems with it at all but I just wanted to use my own mount to raise it up a bit higher because I'm an old man and I have a bad back. I also like to be able to leave things like the extra batteries and some of the accessories hanging from the tripod extenders. Be careful of cord wrap if you do this. One of the other accessories I use all the time is a 3D printed dew or light shield. Really helps with blocking stray light entering the camera. But here you have Scorpius, pretty high, well pretty high for me in the south as it gets dark. And I think I'm just gonna concentrate on the objects in that area. And maybe later on in the night, I might swing more towards the north and see can I capture some galaxies that I've captured at home just to see um, in comparison what they're like from here to there. Spoiler alert, thankfully I didn't waste my time on objects I can see well from home and concentrated on the galactic core region which was the whole point of making this trip. Next to set up was the Dwarf 2. I absolutely love this little scope. I've taken it now on a couple of astro trips and I've even managed to get some decent results from the middle of New York City, probably one of the most highly light polluted places in the world. So I was super excited to see what I was going to be able to capture under these near perfect imaging conditions. At the time of making this video, both ZWOC Star and Dwarf Lab have announced the next in line for each of these scopes, hoping to try them out when they become available and test under the exact same conditions. Okay, so I'm pretty much set up and ready to go. It's starting to get dark really quickly. You can see the sun setting to the west behind Mount Tede, and we're gonna be pretty spoiled with fantastic views of the south in that direction. I ran both scopes for the night under some of the best skies I've ever witnessed. Next morning, I processed the shots in Cyril and Photoshop, and here's the results. So as you can see, we had a really great night capturing lots of different objects. I have to say I'm torn between these two scopes because both perform excellently and they have their pros and cons. The Dwarf is super on wide field and the S50 really nails objects that need a narrower field of view. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, clear skies and keep looking up.